Hi everyone! Today we'll create our very own Python library and we will load it to the Python package index, also known as pip, so that by the end of this video, everyone on Earth will be able to pip install your code. Now, we will start with a very basic library and we will upgrade it as we go, experimenting with different import conditions and creating different versions. Now, one thing I should mention is that once we load something into pip, there is no going back, so please only upload things you are proud of. Otherwise, use the test index instead, where silly things are perfectly welcome. So, are you ready? Let's roll! So let's say we have a file named humans.py, and inside it we have a personal library. In my case, an ancestral family tree that stores information about fathers, mothers, and children. And the idea is, we have a set of classes, such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and in these classes, we store the immediate family. Now, if you'd like to follow along, you can find this file on GitHub, just please make sure to rename it from init to humans, at least at this stage. And you can, of course, find the link in the description. But before we turn this file into an actual package, let's quickly make sure it works. So, for example, let's say we have another file right beside it, let's call it myapp.py, and let's import our local library into it with import humans. Now, through this library, we will list all the mothers in the family tree with print humans.mothers. Now, if we run it in our terminal with python3 myapp.py, we will see the results, of course. And the same goes for humans.fathers and humans.children. We can easily retrieve the names of all the family members. But the only problem is, we don't really know how they relate to one another. To solve it, we will create a father object, for example, humans.jacob with a capital J and an empty set of round brackets. We will then assign it to a variable named Jacob. And then if we print jacob.children, we can actually see who gave birth to which of his kids. Great, so let's say we are happy with this library and we are ready to share it with the world. But how do we convert it into something that Pip can read? Well. First, we need to gather some project files and give them a very specific structure. So let's navigate to our project folder through our file system and let's copy the file humans.py. Then we will create a new directory named src, as in source, and inside it we will create another one that matches the name of our library. In my case, simply humans. Then we will paste humans.py into our new humans directory and we will rename it to init, just like the file we got from GitHub. Now, please make sure to rename it without adding the .py extension, because it already is a Python file, so if you specify it again, you would just end up with init.py.py, which will, of course, make everything else fail. Now, once we have a properly named init file, we need to decide who can use it and under which conditions. In my case, I would like my package to be free and available for any kind of use, and I also want to bind any project that uses my library to the exact same conditions. For this, we will use something called a license, in my case, the General Public License version 3, which we will copy from its official website, and the link, just like the rest of the links, are in the description. We will then paste it in a new file and we will save it as license in all caps, right next to our src directory. In addition, we need a readme file, which we will save right next to our license as readme.md. And this is what the Python index will display to anyone who stumbles upon our package, so please make sure it accurately represents it. In my case, I prepared a very quick markdown description with two simple code examples. Now, lastly, we need another file named pyproject.toml, which we will save right beside our readme and license. Now, to save some time, you can go ahead and copy its content from the description, replacing most of my details with your details, where at the very top, we specify something called a build backend. It is responsible for assembling all the individual files which is created into a single Python package. In my case, I'm using a library named Hatchling and setting it 
under the build system table. Now, you can leave this section as is, but definitely revise everything else below it. So for example, all the details inside the project table, such as the name of the library that must be a perfect match to the name of the folder we stored inside SRC. Okay, this is very important. So if it's humans there, then it must be humans here. Then we specify the version, the author, and a very basic description, as well as which versions of Python our library is suitable for. But the most interesting section is probably the classifiers, where you can't just specify any kind of value. It must be a value from the official PyPI list of classifiers. So for example, if you are using the MIT license for your project, then you need to find it in the list first, copy it into your code and paste it as an item in classifiers. Now, you can add as many classifiers as you'd like, and they will help users with finding your project, okay? Now, another detail we should specify is the URL of our GitHub repository, where users can submit their issues in case, you know, something goes wrong. And great, we are officially done with the project files, and we are ready to convert them into something called a Python wheel. Now, Wheels are local packages that we can easily distribute and install. And they're very similar to the remote packages that we download from pip, but instead of living online, they live on our computer. Now, to turn our files into a wheel, we will first get rid of our demo files, myapp.py and humans.py, because now our library is stored inside src slash humans slash init.py. So let's go ahead and open our WSL terminal once again, and let's make sure we do so from the base environment, which we can access with source, followed by a curly dash, followed by slash dot bash RC. And there you go, we are now inside the base environment. Now, once we are here, we will make sure we have the latest version of pip, which we can do with pip install dash dash upgrade pip. And if we're already here, we will also pip install upgrade a package builder named build. Then we will navigate to the same directory as our Py project, in my case with cd double dot dot slash, such that if we run the ls command, we will then see our Py project dot toml right below. There you go. Then finally, once we are in the correct directory, we will generate our Python wheel with Python 3-M built. And perfect, we have successfully built two different files, one archive and one wheel. And you can of course find them through your file system as well. Now, the cool thing about wheels is that we can actually pip install them. So just to quickly demonstrate, if we navigate to the dist directory with cd dist and we create some kind of working environment, let's say one for Python 3.11, then we can just type pip install followed by the name of the wheel, which will immediately install our package. How do we know that? Well, if we quickly type Python 3 in our terminal, we can then import humans. And if we print humans.mothers, then everything works like a charm. Amazing. Now, the only thing left to do is uploading our wheel into pip. And for this, we will need an API key from pypi.org. So let's navigate there from our browser and let's register to create a new account. Now, if you're struggling with the two-factor authentication, try using a phone app named Authenticator. At least that's what I've done on my end. Now, once we verify our email, we will navigate to the account settings tab and we will scroll all the way down until we see the API token section. Now, if you're not sure what API means, I've explained it in great detail in this tutorial, definitely check out the timestamps. Otherwise, we will click on add API token, we will give it a name and we will select the scope of the entire account. Then we will of course click on create token and we will make sure to copy it and store it in a secure place before we close our browser. Why? Because you will not see this token ever again. So make sure to save it on your system and also remember where you saved it because this is a problem too. Now, once we have an API key, we can actually go back to our terminal and 
pip install upgrade, a utility named Twine, which will help us load our local packages into the official index. Then, from the same directory as our py project file, we will type python3-m twine, followed by upload dist slash asterisk, which basically means upload all the files from the newly created dist directory into pip using the twine utility. That's a nice translation. Now, once we hit enter, we will go ahead and specify our API token, which we will copy and paste from our browser if we didn't close it yet. And oh no, we get a nasty, nasty error, because apparently Maria is not allowed to upload anything to the humans project. But how come? We have an official API key, we got all our files right, so why not? Well, it appears that there already is a Python library named humans, created in 2016 by a user named Shezzle, and it has been collecting dust ever since. Which is very sad, because they took over the name, but they didn't do anything with it. We don't even know what this library does and if it does anything, right? So, folks, please don't be like Shezo and upload some silly experiments instead of an actual usable library. If you'd like to experiment, you can use the test PyPI index instead and leave the official index for real packages. Okay? Sorry about the crazy eyes. I'm just a bit upset. Now, you can find the instructions and links in the description. And if you're using the test index, you can even upload my humans library into it. It's a great way to practice and nobody will be upset about it. Okay, but how do we solve our issues? Well, let's just rename our library to biblical underscore humans. We will do so inside our Py project and we will revise the readme file as well to reflect the new name. Then we can get rid of the dist folder because we need a new wheel anyways. And lastly, we will rename our humans directory inside SRC to biblical underscore humans as well. Because as you remember, it must be a perfect match to the name inside Py project. And as you remember, it is very important. Then from the base environment, we will navigate to the same directory as our Py project and we will build a new wheel with Python 3-M build. Now, once we have a new wheel, we can go ahead and load it into pip with Python 3-M twine, upload all the files from the dist directory. We will enter our API token once again and boom, our biblical humans package is now officially public and we can access it in the following URL where we don't really need the version extension. And beautiful, here's our readme, here's our project details and classifiers and so on. Now let's quickly see how it works. And this part is very important if you've included an underscore in the name of your library, okay? You will see shortly why. Now, from a Windows-based Anaconda terminal, this time, if you're not sure what it means, check out this tutorial, we will then activate some kind of working environment, or you can create a new one if you'd like, it doesn't really matter. Now, let's copy the installation command from our PyPI landing page, where instead of an underscore, we are dealing with a dash. Ha! Huh. Then, since we are now using Windows, instead of typing Python 3, we will simply type Python. Now, here's the fun part. If we import biblical-humans, like in our installation command, it is not going to work. Instead, we will import biblical-humans, which apparently is the right way to go. And I know it's weird, but when we install something, we use a dash, and when we import it, we use an underscore. It's a special kind of character, so if you don't want to deal with this unnecessary complexity, then don't include it in your name, okay? Now, to make sure it works, we will quickly create an Isaac object, we will print his number of children, and we will verify that their names are Jacob and Esav. And perfect. Congratulations. Everything works like a charm. Now, if we'd like to update our package, adding two new attributes to the class of father, specifying the age of death and their father's name, and we, of course, do so all across the board, 
And let's say that in our readme file, we now suggest to import biblical humans as BH. So to update our package with these two little changes, we will navigate to our py project file and we will simply change the version from 001 to 002. Then we will build a new wheel and instead of uploading all the distribution files, we will only upload the newly generated one copying its name from the terminal and pasting it right after dist. And boom! Our package was successfully updated to the new version, and here's our beautiful readme that basically proves it. So in that case, if we now upgrade pip and install biblical-humans again, we are dealing with version 002. Yay! Now, if your library is a bit more complex, you can also split it into different modules. So for example, let's say that we have three files inside our biblical humans directory. We have init, we have Hebrews, and we have Mesopotamians, where init only stores the class of father, with empty attributes and a single method that counts the number of children. Now, as you may guess, the Hebrews file imports the class of father from the init file with from dot import father, and then we use it to create the Hebrew dynasty of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on. Additionally, from the Hebrews module, we can fetch the fathers, mothers, and children because all that information can be found within the Bible. Similarly, the Mesopotamians module also imports the class of father, but creates the dynasty of Noah, Shem, Chem, and Yefet. But since the Bible doesn't specify the names of their wives, we can only fetch the fathers and children through this module. So this separation kind of makes logical sense. Okay, so how will this thing work? Well, in that case, from biblical humans, we will import Hebrews or Mesopotamians. And then instead of humans.abraham, we are dealing with Hebrews.abraham or with Mesopotamians.noah. And the same goes for Hebrews.mothers or Mesopotamians.fathers. So let's quickly upload it as version 3, which we already know how to do. So let's just fast forward this part. There you go. And as a final test, let's pip install biblical humans in the version of 003. Now let's quickly copy the imports and father objects from our readme file, because it is not easy to spell Mesopotamians, okay? Very, very challenging. But once we do so, we can print noah.children, which works like a charm. But how about abraham.children? And it works as well. Yay! Now, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with the world. And don't forget to leave it a huge thumbs up and all kinds of comments. Now, if you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you very soon. In the meanwhile, bye-bye!